Alright ladies and gents, welcome back to another AutoCAD web app video. This is a dialed down version of AutoCAD. Uh, it's browser based, it's web.autocad.com and right now we are currently using this in the school because our students are virtual and they don't have the full version of the software at home. So what you're going to do in this video, we're actually going to be making a parquet floor or parquet flooring. Um, you can see by some of these images what that looks like and basically it's just you have like three rows that are going horizontal and then three rows that are going vertical and three horizontal and three vertical okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna open up our title block file and we're gonna draw it right inside the title block now there's two ways to do this you can do the centering version which I'm gonna show you in a second or you can draw the entire thing out here and then move it into the center later so I'll show you that real quick. If I have the drawing already done and I go with the line tool and I put one diagonal from there to there and then I do the same thing on this one. I put a diagonal from there to there. I can take this object. By the way, I'm clicking and holding the mouse down in order to get this blue box or green box. Blue box selects everything inside of it. Green box will select anything that's barely touching it. Okay. Um, so I can select this. I can do the move command M enter or you can type out move or you can go to the move tool which is right here uh, you're gonna grab this from the midpoint and we already had a midpoint there so I guess we didn't really need the diagonal but we'll go with it anyways and you're gonna move it on to the midpoint of the other diagonal and then erase the two diagonals and the drawing would be done okay but here's how we actually draw the drawing so we're gonna forget this one for a second you know what we'll leave that there so we can see what it looks like um, and we're going to do a diagonal across and then you're going to do the construction line. So this is if you're going to draw it right inside your title block. The construction line or X line command allows you to snap to the midpoint. So now if we're not, if we're not getting this midpoint, we have to go down to O snap. Be careful though. You don't want to hit this and turn that off. You want to leave that on, which is blue. And you want to make sure that the midpoint is checked. Okay. So X line midpoint you're gonna do a crosshair basically there's gonna be one up and one down sorry one up and down one left to right and then after we get that we can get rid of the diagonal line we needed the diagonal in order to get that midpoint and this is the start of every drawing now the size of this drawing is nine by six which means that you have to find half of those numbers when you're using the offset command so half of nine is four point five so when you're in the offset tool, you're going to click on the vertical line and you're going to move to the right with your cursor. You can see it starts counting up. We'll type in the box 4.5 and hit enter. And that's the same thing as if you were to type 4 and 1 half. So you can do 4 minus sign 1 over 2 and it will do the same thing. Okay, you have to have the minus sign there because that stands for end. 4 and 1 half. Okay, uh, the height of this drawing is 6. Half of that is 3. So you're on offset again click the horizontal line you're gonna go up three and you're gonna go down three now here's a new tool for you there's a tool called fill it okay and you would hit R for radius or you would click down here where it says radius and you hit enter after the R and then you it wants to know what the fillet radius is so let's say I did one inch here what that would do is it would round this corner between two lines now we don't want to round it but one of the things we can do rather than all the trimming is we can do a fillet radius of zero which means no curve at all and you can click on these two lines and it just makes a corner so rather than having to trim this and trim that you would just make a fillet okay a fillet radius zero so now the fillet tool is let's see if they have that out right here and again you would do radius zero and we can go like this from one to two now rather than going back into the tool every time I can hit spacebar and that'll bring me right back into what I was just doing, which is a fillet radius zero, spacebar, two lines. Okay, we no longer need these two. Now, without doing fillet, this is how much trimming you would have to do. You'd have to go trim. If you were to click right here, it's going to leave this line left over, which you would have to erase later. Um, if you were to do this one first, then this one that's two trims this is three trims okay so you have to do that all the way around which is kind of a pain so that's why I use the fillet command okay um, so let's go back into fillet radius zero 
one, two, space bar, one, two, space bar, one, two, and this will help with every drawing that you're doing when you're trying to get the box size. Again, the box size is defined by the, wi the widest point of the drawing and the tallest point of the drawing, which is nine by six, and remember, we took half of those numbers in order to do our offsets, okay? We do not need these two lines anymore. Well, actually, you know what? We could keep those for this drawing, so let's go around. Now we'd have to do just a regular trim. You're going to trim this, you're going to trim that, but notice how it left this line over, right? So another thing you could do is trim with cutting edges. Think about a pair of scissors. I want this line to be cut at this edge. So I'm going to say, okay, that's my edge, and hit enter. Do I want to trim it above it or below it? I want to trim below it, all right? And then you would hit escape, space bar. You would do cutting edges again. I want to cut it at this edge, and that's basically where it would get cut with a pair of scissors hit enter and then above or below we would go above okay so we can keep it like this uh, you know what sorry we do not want these we need we do not want the vertical line okay the horizontal line works because it goes right down the middle this one is right down the middle but down the middle here there's nothing there it's set, it's set into thirds okay so then we would go back to the offset command and we would do um, you'd click the leftmost line you would move to the right side and do three enter and then you can click on that same line again the one that you just created three enter and now we're set up to do the rest of it okay so here's the next part that's a little interesting when you go to do offset these are one inch apart okay so obviously you know if something is is uh is six inches that would mean that this is three inches and if this was three inches and you break them up into three different pieces they would be one inch a piece okay so sometimes you got to do a tiny bit of math in order to figure out what the size of something is all right so when i go to do this offset command and i click on this line right here um, I'm doing the middle one first. I'm going to go up one inch, and then I'm going to hit space bar twice, three times actually. One would be an escape, and then two more times would get you back into what you were in. Okay, But you don't have to remember that. You can just go to offset each time, and you can click the line, and you move in the up direction, and you do one enter. Okay, So now when I'm doing trim, I can trim this side and this side, and that part's done. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing here and then the same thing here. So go back to offset again, go uh, click on the top line, come down one inch, click on the new line, come down one inch, and then the same thing would apply in here where you would trim that out. Okay. Now the other ones are going to be vertical lines. So if I go to do offset again, I'm going to go, sorry, I keep trying to type the number first because that's the way that the software works, um, but you don't type anything yet. You click the line first, you move to the left, and you do one enter. And then you click that new line again, and you go one, enter. And we're going to do the same thing over here, one, enter. Now you can see that it starts to get a little busy in this top part. We don't want those lines there, but we're going to trim those in a second. This line, one, enter. This line, one, enter. Okay, something like that. Now, let's do trimming edges again. Cutting edge. This is going to be my cutting edge because I'm looking at these two lines, and I don't want them to continue up here. So after I click my cutting edge, I can hit enter and then I just click anything that's above that line. Okay, so those two are done. Um, same cutting edge, I can click below now, and then I can click above now. And the drawing's done. Last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to annotate and you're gonna put two dimensions on there. You have to put these dimensions on there because that's what's telling me if you made it the right size or not. If you go to do these dimensions and they come out to be some wildly different number, like let's say this one came out to be you know, 5.33 something something, then I know that you didn't really make it the right size and then it's actually no good. All right. So just like any architectural plan, it has to be the exact right size because, you know, let's say somebody's reading this plan, they need to be able to remake this, you know, or build this or whatever it is to this exact size. Okay. So now we're going to go from here to here and we're just going to show that that one is six. Okay. Um, so here you go. Hit save. We're going to do the, uh, we're going to go to print and make a PDF again. You can leave all this stuff alone. Landscape is fine. Plot the PDF. This will say PDF is generating. When the PDF is done, it will be available at download. It'll give you a little blue icon right here. Click on that. It downloads your PDF. And then that's the file that you would upload to your Google Classroom in order to get your grade. Okay. So thank you guys for watching. This was the parquet floor. And again, we created something similar to this type of flooring. Okay, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.